Moses was an Egyptian. Sigmund Freud, Moses and Monotheism. Hello and welcome back. We see the frivolity of the humanist's interest during conversations on the road to Montesinos. His main project, which he also calls My Book of Transformations, is a burlesque of Ovid. It contains allegorical stories about the origins of Spanish natural and architectural wonders, including some we have already seen, the Giralda of Seville, the Bulls of Guisando, and even the Sierra Morena. His other project is a supplement to the Italian humanist Polydor Virgil's famous book on the origins of things, published in 1499. The cousin's attention to the origins of things overlooked by his precursor makes for humorous dialogue. For example, he plans to declare who first contracted a cold and who first used mercury cream to cure syphilis. Who was the first man on earth to catch a cold and the first to use ointments to cure himself of the French disease? Sancho comically suggests that he include Adam as the first man to scratch his head because he was the first man and he had a head and then Lucifer as the world's first acrobat because when he was thrown out of heaven, he came tumbling down into the abyss. The cousin and Sancho are mocking the rhetorical exercises of both humanists and scholastics. The Cave of Montesinos episode imitates a common event in classical epic known as catabasis, a descent into the underworld found in Homer, Virgil, and Dante. The term also means a voyage down to the coast, as in the opening scene of Plato's Republic. Did you know the etymological origin of the word katabasis is a combination of the Greek words kata, down, and basis, go? Literally, katabasis means a downward movement. Don Quixote descends into the cave, but he also seeks access to the coast. Later, he will end up in Barcelona, and here he tries to explain the origin of the nearby lakes of Ruidera, thought to be fed by the Guadiana River, which flows into the Atlantic at the border with Portugal. Of course, Freudian critics also love this episode. As we approach the cave of Montesinos, Cervantes ridicules intellectual quests for knowledge, but he also sets the stage for Don Quixote's encounter with the primordial past, as well as with Don Quixote's own diabolical unconscious his repressed desires, his id. There's also something of an anxious return to the birth canal here. The opening of the cave is foreboding. They arrived at the cave, which had a wide and spacious mouth, although it was covered with thick and intricate brambles, wild figs, blackberries, and brushes. Don Quixote is tied to a long rope, an umbilical cord, and lowered into the abyss. Indicating anxiety about the origins of Spain, Don Quixote quotes from a ballad about the reconquest siege of Granada. This kind of venture, Sancho, my friend, was reserved for me alone. He also makes a curious comment about having forgotten to bring some small cowbell to mark his position. Recall the bell on Eugenio's spotted she-goat in chapter 50 of part one. Cervantes builds suspense Magnificently, Don Quixote evokes God and Dulcinea as he approaches the abyss, the chasm, the mouth of the cave, and suddenly they come flying out crows and ravens and nocturnal birds, such as bats. The descent is both eerie and hilarious, like a scene from Poe. The cousin and Sancho lower Don Quixote using the entire rope, 100 spans, or about 170 meters. They wait about a half an hour and they pull him out. Strangely, they do not sense Don Quixote on the other end of the rope. They went and pulled up the rope with great ease and no weight on it at all, which caused them to imagine that Don Quixote had remained within. But then reaching, it seemed to them, a little more than 80 spans, they felt a weight. If we do the math, 20 spans were simply slack, and Don Quixote must have touched the bottom of the cave at 80 spans. Who is the classical author most alluded to by the cousin of the licentiate skilled at fencing? A. Terence B. Ovid C. Platus 
Correct answer B, Ovid. Finally, at 10 spans, or 17 meters, Sancho sees Don Quixote and yells down to him, Your grace is most welcome back, my lord, for we were thinking that you were going to remain down there and start a family. Hilariously, however, when they take him out, Don Quixote is sleeping. His eyes were closed with indications of being asleep. And it takes them some time to wake him up. Then they spread the cousin's multicolored saddle cloth on the green grass and eat a big meal together. They supped and dined all at once. Meals are meaningful in Don Quixote, especially this one, which follows so closely that of Camacho's failed wedding. They then refold the saddle cloth and sit on the grass to discuss what has happened. Note Don Quixote's insistence that the cave of Montesinos is not an inferno. This suggests that the episode alludes to Protestantism's rejection of the existence of purgatory. That's all for now. Please tune in and watch our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.